Hello, hello, everybody. Today's topic is why is it so hard to imagine the invention of a new ism? So let that sit for a minute. Why is it so hard to imagine the invention of a new ism? So the, this topic actually came from a place, and I think a lot of my topics doing conversations come from conversations, like this crazy thing called a conversation with other living human beings. And this, a lot of the conversations I have, it's like really intentional and purposeful to talk to people who think very differently than I am or have different opinions and just doing my best to try to like listen and be open, but of course, like also share. So I think, you know, we've got that going on in conversations in terms of my purpose. And recently I had a conversation with somebody who I deeply, deeply respect. As a matter of fact, it might be one of the people I respect the most in my life. And we have very different views on a lot of things, especially when it comes to politics or when it comes to, you know, this person's a, a traditionalist and I am kind of in certain ways an anti-traditionalist. So, but we talk and, and I engage and I ask questions and I'm curious and, in this conversation, we had been talking about like this very real, in my opinion, based on the emotional reaction um, that I see from a lot of older generations around this like huge fear of socialism, like the United States is going to become socialist. Oh my gosh, we're going to become socialists. And, and it kind of confused me, I'll be honest, um, but I really was just curious and I went, really wanted to get to the bottom of like, why, like, why are people so scared and like beyond this constant reference to like other countries who are socialist or what's happened in the past or how they believe socialism leads to communism, whatever that might be. My response to all of it was, wait a second, why does doing something different, like why is it that not being capitalist automatically means that the only other option is to become socialist? Capitalism didn't exist until it did. Socialism didn't exist until it did. Communism didn't exist until it did. So what is keeping us, the young, one of the youngest countries in the world, from our ability to adapt and say, maybe it's just time for something new. Maybe it's time for the invention of a new economic system or a new ism. Is that really that far-fetched? Is it really that crazy? What was fascinating, there's a few things that came out of that part of it, but I think the most impactful was, again, this very emotional reaction I got from saying, we can't go forward by looking backwards. We can't go forward by trying to become something we once were. That time is over. And like, what if the future is something that we don't even know what it's gonna be and we just need to stay open. And again, like the, the emotion and the heat that was coming from this person I was talking to. And I was like, man, what is this about? And I said, you know, why is that so hard to hear? And I feel like the answer was so honest and I just deeply respect it. And the answer was whenever he would hear, like, we're not gonna go backwards or that what, the way we used to be isn't the way we're gonna be in the future. He said, he, it feels like he, it, it's in, insulting because he feels like he's being thrown, like throw them away, throw them on the ground. They don't have anything to offer. Like what they know and their experience and their life knowledge is meaningless. And I was like, man, that's really like raw and honest. And it was like, it made me feel sad for, you know, for him to think like, that's the way that he's taking change. Like that it's somehow an insult to him and his entire generation to say, we're not gonna go back to the way things were, you know? And even to the point to not even digest the possibility of like some inventing something new. So I, that, that was most of the thought. I thought it was just really insightful and really honest and something that if anybody out there has been pondering this too, maybe it's something like that didn't cross your mind and it, it kind of shocks you as well. It was a little bit of a shock to me like, wow, that's really how he sees it and potentially many people from his generation. The other part is like right now, I think we're dealing with such a polarized society because of this shift in this change, because of the largest his, in history population in this country of people um, in the senior population 
And so they're still here. Um, the majority of our government is still people over the age of 65. And so there's this power struggle happening. And I think it's causing a lot of polarization happening in society and this need to kind of box people in. And so whether you're talking about like Democrats or Republicans or conservatives or liberals or progressives or traditional, whatever absurd title that people feel the need to attach themselves to, um, there's just a lot of that happening right now. And so I think when there's all this like people box being boxed in and putting a title to it, it's going to make it even harder to get creative and innovative and for people to get on board and say, hey, wait a second. Maybe the answer isn't to do things the way they've always been done. Maybe the answer is to come up with a new way. So all of that information, conversations, like interesting moments is what drove this conversation and drove this video. So first, let me start by making a statement. And it's just a fact. The past will never be again because it's over. It's been left behind. We should learn from it. We should see the good, the bad, and the ugly. We should pull the good out that's relevant to the future, and we should apply it. And when the bad things that happen, we shouldn't forget them. We should say, let's acknowledge they happened. That was bad. Let's make sure that we put measures in for that bad thing to not happen again. But the reality is we can never go. We haven't done time travel yet. Maybe that's into the future, but right now, we are constantly moving forward in time, whether anyone wants to or not. So let's start there. We can't bring people back from the dead. We can't go backwards in time. We can't magically wake up and it's 1952. You can't take away technology. You know, it's here and it's here to stay. So bottom line is we gotta move forward and people just have to accept that whether they want to or not, because it's just facts and it's just reality. You know, it's when we talk about the invention or the innovation of something new, of carrying it forward and saying, wait a second, what if, I know this sounds crazy, but like, what if we were to look at communism and go, what was good in that? What was bad in that? What's relevant? Like, those are the three questions. And go, okay, this is relevant. This is bad. Don't do that again. This is, this is actually some good thoughts, some good logical thoughts that is relevant to now and in the future, let's pull that out. Let's look at, you know, at socialism, same situation, same three questions. Let's look at capitalism and look at those same three questions and not treat capitalism as if, or our constitution, by the way, as if it's the Bible. Let's start there. It ain't the Bible for people to reference it and use at their leisure. Oh, but in the constitution, it's this. And as if no matter what it says in the constitution, that was created hundreds of years ago is somehow mean that it's always relevant to today or it's relevant in the future. I think we have to ask those questions. What was good, what's bad, and what's relevant? And we ask those questions even about the constitution. We ask, we question it all. And we use those questions to drive something new and something different that brings all that good stuff together that enables us to learn about how, where things could potentially go wrong and face our humanity in that way, just like we have to face the humanity in capitalism. Just like the other isms, it was born with good intention. It was born with the idea that free market was good and that free market could be trusted. It was born with the idea that corporate America could be trusted. It was birthed with the idea that government could be trusted. And the problem with that is, is that greed got in the way. I got to tell you, there's a lot of brokenness in capitalism right now because of greedy people and their God is the almighty dollar and they justify in the name of their God treating people horribly. And you go, well, you know, it's, it's all, it's because it's business. Don't take it personally. It's business. It's business. Well, no, you know, we're still human beings. And so capitalism is broken folks in a lot of ways. And in many ways, if you ask those same three questions, you know, what's good what's bad and what's relevant, I have a hard time picturing that that's the answer of our future without thinking we've got to go somehow backwards in time, which again is just never going to happen. So that's the challenge I put forth for everybody here to think about. And I, I, I put the thought to you in an action oriented way, whether you're a business leader, whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, whether you lead a not-for-profit organization, whether you're a civil servant, you know, whether you hold a public office is to say, why are we confining ourselves to the way things that used to be? Why are we saying that we've 
met that traditional level. And I think in many ways, that's where things went wrong with socialism was that, you know, they stopped in Europe and in many countries that practice socialism, they stopped being creative. They stopped being open to change. They kept going back to saying, but this is the way it was intended to be, even though it's not working. Same thing with communism. So if we look at that and say, wait a second, maybe the United States, even though we're the, one of the youngest countries in the world, we're also aging. Is capitalism just aging out? That was the question. That was the quote. That was the statement. Capitalism is aging out. Everything does have an age. And I think when we don't recognize that something is aging out, we still insist on continuing to live that way. There's some, I don't think good stuff comes out of that. I think that we become stagnant, we become complacent, we start to overlook bad things, we start to enable bad things happening, we start to look for loopholes, and I'm wondering if capitalism has already started aging out because of these other nasty little demons of greed and what have you happening and um, corruption, you know, happening certainly. I question the United States' ability to stay relevant not necessarily as a world leader, but as a relevant period in the world and in the world financial market, if we continue to insist that capitalism in its traditional and original form is the only way. Are we going to be relevant? Are we going to have any impact over time? What does this look like in 100 years, in 200 years, in 300 years, in 500 years? What does it look like if we still have this attachment to tradition that was actually born initially out of innovation like that's the irony to me is like when we were a newly born country it was all about creative and doing things differently and now we're like just falling into the same pitfalls as a lot of other countries and i think we've got a lot to learn and we, when we talk about learning from people who are older when we talk about learning from other countries like that have been around for a long time like what are we really learning are we really learning enough to say are we prepared to do things differently I also, in wrapping up here, I'm just going to share with that generation of our, our, of our 60 plusers that are out there right now. Please understand that like, just because somebody wants change, just because change is inevitable and there isn't a desire to go backwards in time and to, to have somehow magically life be what it once was, it's not a disregarding of your value. It has nothing to do with throwing you out. You are a, a, find, a foundational block in building of human history and American history. You're a block, one of them, not the only one. We're not an upside down pyramid here. You're a building block in the history of this country and of the world and of humanity. And that's a really important role. It's just not the only one. Just because you want to feel valued and that you had something to offer and you weren't thrown away once you're gone and your generation has moved on from this planet, no one's throwing you away. No one's throwing away what you had to offer. It's just to say that you're not the most important and you haven't identified, you haven't created the singular identity of this country. You're just a part of that really important foundation and building block. And thank you for that. Thank you for being part of that. And I hope that it opens up some people's minds to say, man, maybe I really do need to look at this differently and be okay and not be, make it so emotionally charged and powerful and, and personal that people don't, everybody doesn't agree with doing things my way.